Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm David Mize with Mize Formula. This is the MF5 Superlight Project. So let's take a look at the engine here, guys. This is the billet plated peripheral ported five rotor engine. It's using billet pro plates. And this thing was assembled by Stephen Cockerell in Australia, who's the owner of Billet Rotary Store. And you can see here we have 12.5 millimeter studs that go all the way through the engine. And the great thing about these billet plates is that they're machined. On a CNC and so they're very accurate and so when you make these studs and you put this whole engine together you get a very straight motor and on top of that we have this aluminum billet machined oil pan which is really thick and we scavenge the oil from under the motor it's a dry sump pan it was made by DLH manufacturing in Texas with also the instruction of Todd Buddy and myself and that helps the motor to be really structurally sound it kind of braces the engine and we've got fd motor mounts on the rear of the engine and fd motor mounts on the front of the engine and we're using ffe motor mounts full function engineering with a high durometer polyurethane bushings so this is going to keep the engine really solid where it's not going to try to move around in the car and then you can see here these beautiful billet peripheral ports that were machined by Billet Rotary Store. So if we look at this side of the engine, you'll see the ignition, the spark plugs, and you've got these little water ports that are over here next to the spark plugs. This is something that's kind of unique. You see these on a few motors, but it's pretty rare. And what this does is help you to radially feed water. So some of the water that enters the motor, most, most of the time the water enters and exits up here in the front. And that gives you a pressure drop 
and a temperature differential across the engine, especially when you have a long engine. So what you can do is you can introduce some of that cold water at the front, you can branch it off and you can feed the rotors directly at the spark plugs from the side to try to equalize that delta across the engine by radially feeding it. And to help more so, we have a water pump that's pretty serious. It's a serious duty water pump from Mazir. It'll be cog driven. It can deliver close to about 50 gallons per minute. It's almost a gallon per second so that we can move some serious water through this block, try to equalize the temperatures. Because the name of the game is to keep rotor one and rotor five equal. You don't want to have a temperature differential across the engine. And generally when you get a long engine, the rotors at the back want to run hotter than the rotors at the front because the water coming in is cold and the water that exits um, comes through the last rotor at the end. And then it's always hotter at the back. And the other thing we do is we run exhaust gas temperature probes on each one of these exhaust ports so that we can make minute fuel adjustments to tune the rotors independently to each other to compensate for anybody that's running hot or different from the others. And so the cool thing about these peripheral ports, if you get up close, you can actually see the rotor inside. Like you can see the rotor right here on number three. Peripheral ports are pretty obvious here that the air goes directly into the rotor housing just like it exits out of the exhaust. So there's very little restriction and you can play with the port timing by the placement of that port. If you move the port closer to the top of the rotor housing, you have less ignition or I mean less uh, intake duration. If you move it closer to the exhaust port, it's a more advanced intake duration. So that's sort of like your cam profile. So a more advanced cam on the intake would be a peripheral port that's moved closer to the exhaust. And so these plates that are in between, they're blocked off. There's no ports. And generally a rotary engine would feed through these ports and you would call it a side port engine. It would be fed through these ports here. It would have like two ports and it'd be fed into here and it would go into the rotor housings this way. And a peripheral port, you delete that and you come in directly. So the great thing about the billet engine is that all of this was machined into it. So you're not having to do any modifications or use epoxies or anything like that. It makes for a very reliable engine, not to mention it's very straight because when you machine these studs and you drill the holes, for this motor, it's all done with computers on a machine. It's very accurate. And when you have an engine that's really long, accuracy is very important. So another thing I want to touch on real quick is why I chose Billet Pro plates over the other brands. There's a lot of different Billet options on the market. And in my opinion, from the conversations that I've had and the things that I've seen and experienced tuning another Billet Pro 4 rotor that was built by Billet Rotary Store, I find that they are most similar to the Mazda OEM engine in terms of how the internals uh, line up with the side seals and the corner seals and the wear characteristics because they have these removable inserts that have similar rock wall hardness and wear characteristics to the, um, to the irons, the Mazda factory irons. And it also allows for more cooling behind that plate as opposed to some of the more traditional billet plates that came out earlier that are just a solid piece of aluminum with a treated surface. So that's one of the deciding factors behind why I wanted the Billet Pro Plate. I find that they seem to be very reliable and the engines don't have sealing issues. They don't burn and create smoke and have oil blow by. And they just seem to be um, most similar to a Mazda factory engine, but with the strength of the Billet plates that aren't gonna crack. You're not gonna have oiling down on your tires, the track, if you make a mistake, hit the limiter and you're lean and you, and, and you have a, like a, a knock issue. It's not going to cause a catastrophic failure where you're going to lose your oil. That's something that happens to drag racers and road racers with Mazda factory plates. That's kind of one of the risks that you run is cracking an iron. That's something that's eliminated by having a aluminum billet plate, whether it's a billet pro or, or, or another brand, that's one of the great things. So the billet pro plate with the structural integrity, the accuracy, having an engine that could be really long, but also nice and straight. And then also the brilliance of Stephen Cockerell putting this engine together and looking at all the tolerances. I mean, there was so much conversation that went into in play and bearing clearances and, and grinding the crankshaft to certain um, specifications for certain bearing clearances across the engine and using Mazda factory race bearings and the way that the rotors were balanced and the machine work that was done on the rotors for the clearancing for the high RPM, just all of this stuff. There's so many conversations back and forth and the confidence I have from working with Steven, he's an incredible guy. He's really intelligent. He does a whole lot of different things. He's pretty much like a polymath in general. 
Uh, he's a really cool guy. We've developed a really cool friendship and we talk about lots of stuff. And that's one of the greatest things about using him to build this motor. I'm so glad and thankful that he's created this for me. And we're going to uh, put this whole thing together. And I can't wait to hear what it sounds like after all the the, the back and forth, we're finally going to get to hear this thing in the next few months. I'm super excited. And, you know, here's my left leg going again. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you appreciate this video, seeing the engine in the car, and I hope you continue to join me on this rotary experiment. And uh, please continue to leave me comments and questions, and I'll try to answer as much as I can. So you guys have a great uh, rest of your week, and I'll see you uh, on future updates.